Finally, I want to go to the A of DNA and being uh, that's necessary for multiplication first is death. We have to die if there might be the new that's created. And now I want to give you the A of effective multiplication. It always comes back to this. This has to be there as well, and I've indicated it along the way, but the A is the apprentice, the commitment to having apprentices, the commitment to including apprentices in, new th in what we're doing so that there might be those that would lead in the new wineskin. And if we don't apprentice, then um, it's going to slow everything down in terms of multiplication. And so you remember Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 and 1, you then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and in the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. 2 Timothy 2.2 2. You're faithful. Find a faithful person who will find other faithful people. That's that multiplication through apprenticing, through mentoring. My favorite example in the local church of how important The Apprentice is, is a church in Chicago. It's called um, Community Christian Church. And this church um, is the most effective church that I know of in terms of multiplication. And their commitment is that every person who's in that church is challenged to have somebody that they're apprenticing as a disciple of Christ. Any small group leader is challenged to have an apprentice. And my son, our son, Derek, our second son, is a, a very talented musician. He's the one that learned the piano and stayed with it. He's the one that created a rock and roll band when he was in college. He's the one who came out of college with three other classmates and for three or four years uh, toured and did what they called the rock gospel of Jesus Christ, which was a presentation of the life of Christ in uh, 12 different uh, songs and kind of like Tommy, if you've ever seen that, where the story is told in a series of songs, only that they were describing the gospel of Christ and they had beautiful pictures in the back of historical art. That uh, So it was an interweaving of art and it was an interweaving of music and it was called the rock gospel of Jesus Christ and they did this for many years. So our son's a very talented leader of the band. He's a very talented musician. From the time he was in high school, he was leading groups in worship. Well, he was hired on by this community Christian church in Chicago to be one of the worship leaders in their main campus. And so every Sunday, he would lead thousands of people in worship and did a great job. Even though I'm his dad, I still think he did a great job. And but what was very interesting is that in this job as a worship pastor, his number one responsibility was not to lead worship. His number one responsibility as a worship pastor in this church was to find two or three young men or young women and bring them on as an apprentice and train them in how to lead worship. So I watched Derek, he would look for high school students who had been disciplined to learn an instrument. Someone that was disciplined to have really worked at developing their voice. Someone who maybe had taken little opportunities to lead in worship somewhere else in the church. And he would look for these people. And then he would bring them to his side and he would begin to include them. 
In apprenticing, the way it works is you say to the young apprentice, you say, well, now I'm going to do it and you watch. And then we'll talk. And so he'd do that. He would lead in worship. The apprentice would watch. And then they would talk about what he was doing. And then he would lead in worship and then he'd include them and maybe have, lead, have them lead one worship song. So he did it, but he had them help. And then they talked. And then it would move to where, when he felt they were ready, they would do it, they would lead, and he would help them, and they would talk. And then finally, they would lead in worship, and he would watch, and they would talk. And then finally, they would do it, someone else would watch, and he would rejoice that he had multiplied his life. And the amazing thing is that I saw in our son was that it got to the point after a couple of years that he loved to have apprentices rise up and lead in worship. He loved to see that happen more than he wanted to lead himself in worship. And that's the joy of multiplication. So having an apprentice in what we're doing is critical to this whole process of multiplication. And you know, there's some people who will be willing to teach 100 people, but they're not willing to teach one person how to teach. And there's some pastors who will preach, but they won't teach anybody else how to preach. And there's some leaders who want to lead, but they don't want anybody else that's young to be an elder on the church board. I went to one church and It was dying, it was small, it was not healthy, and I met with the elders, and there were a handful of them in the room, and I asked the question, well, now, when was the last time you brought a new elder into this group? They looked around the table, and they finally decided, well, it was seven years ago. Seven years never apprenticing another elder to come on to be part of the team. And so God calls us to have this commitment to be willing to die even to the things that we do really well, that we might see new things that are created. And all the while apprenticing those at our side until they're ready to take on the leadership perhaps of that new wineskin. And God's heart is that we would be fruitful and that we would multiply. And I just want to encourage you that um, we need to be asking all the time, frequently, every, I'd say, month or two as when I do it, I ask, okay, what do I need to stop doing? What's something new that I need to commit to? And who is it that I need to have as an apprentice? so that the ministry will go on. Right now I'm a superintendent. We're responsible for 200 churches. I have a team of 15 people. that are paid, some full-time, some part-time. I have a board of directors that I report to of 15 men and women. We have delegates from 200 churches that gather once a year that affirm me as the superintendent or say it's time for me to stop. And I've made the personal commitment myself. I'm 60 years old, and my dad died at 57. And I've thought a lot about what would happen to our organization if I were to die tomorrow. And so I've made the personal commitment that I've stopped doing a lot of things. And I'm actively creating some new ministries And then I'm finding young leaders in their 40s that I'm apprenticing to lead these new ministries. And I'll tell you, it's one of my greatest joys to see these five men who could step in tomorrow, to watch them grow, to watch them develop, to mentor them, to bring them along with me, to give them responsibility that's appropriate to where they are. Some are board members, some are pastors, 
Some are part-time employees of our organization. But now there's five different men that our organization could choose to be the next leader. And I believe that's what God wants us to be doing in churches. I think a pastor needs to have elders and volunteer leaders and young leaders that they're growing and mentoring and have as apprentices so that there might be the multiplication of healthy churches among all people. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.